I've been using the Galaxy S24 about a week now and I'm absolutely impressed by how good the phone is. Right from the day I opened it and set it up and over the last few days I've realized there are four things that make the Galaxy S20 a really difficult phone to say no to. The first is display and touch experience. Sure, it's got a great display, rich colors, very bright screen and all that. But those are not significant upgrades. It's the 2x capacitive touchscreen and the 120Hz refresh rate in the display that actually make all the difference and something that the previous Galaxy flagships have just never had. The 2x capacitive touchscreen is the most responsive touch I've ever experienced on a smartphone. And the 120Hz refresh rate, it's just crazy. Sadly, there is no way for me to make you experience this refresh rate on a video that's shot in 30fps but the S20 has twice the refresh rate than that of S10 or the Note 10. So it's really the experience of using the touchscreen that's gone beyond and uh, yeah, it's taken that leap which you just cannot imagine unless you experience it yourself. The third big reason is the camera. Now, I don't know if it's the camera lens or the software, but photography in general has improved massively. I'm simply floored by how the camera is now able to balance exposure, fight balance and even general lighting indoors or outdoors to produce pictures that are accurate, natural and just really good. They've also introduced 8K video recording, but that's not the big deal about it. See, to really enjoy 8K videos, you must also have 8K displays or monitors or TVs, which you don't. But what you can do with the Galaxy S20 is take out high quality 33 megapixel photos, still photos from the video. So the video itself being of such high quality, when you take out a still from it, that's also pretty high quality. The next thing that has really improved is the selfie camera. Now, I'm not a huge selfie person myself, but I know a lot of people that are. But you know, selfie cameras are also used for video calling, which I do a lot. And the S20 has improved that also. It's got a 10 megapixel front facing camera, which may not sound a lot, but it's the improvement in terms of color accuracy and just how natural the pictures look. Now here are some comparisons with the Galaxy S10 Plus to give you a better understanding and just have a more, a better reference. The next big reason is ergonomics and no, I'm not talking about the S20 Ultra or the S20 Plus, the S20 in particular. I love big screens and I use Note 10 Plus as my daily driver, but when I held the S20, it reminded me of what the perfect size for a phone should be. The S20 is even better than the S10 also because of its slightly narrower body, making it more convenient to hold. It's really a very minor difference, but it's something that makes a lot of effect over longer use and you'll realize it as in when you use it. Coming to the next one, it's performance, obviously, and it cannot get better than this. See, performance is not just about a great processor and a lot of RAM, which by the way, the Galaxy S20 has one of the best. It's also about how that performance is optimized and delivered. It's also about intelligent battery conservation that can get very tricky with phones like the Galaxy S20. They've got big bright displays with high refresh rates and very high resolution. They've got powerful processors, a lot of RAM which means a lot of open apps which also means a lot of background processes. So what it means is that the battery must be really smart, intelligent and beefy enough to give you all of that seamlessly and still leave you with a lot of power at the end of the day. And so it's really the art of balancing all of this in a feature-rich device like the Galaxy S20, which as I said can get really tricky, but it's commendable the way the S20 is able to do it. And performance is obviously top-notch, you know, there is no game that it cannot play, there is no level of multitasking that it cannot manage, and you do have the best processor, the Snapdragon 865 or the Exynos 990, uh, that together does give you a lot of performance. So yeah, it's all these four factors put together in just one smartphone that makes the Galaxy S20 a perfect phone to have. You know, an amazing display and touch experience, great photography capabilities, you've got performance at its best and you get the perfect size and shape that any smartphone could have and don't underestimate that because guys it's a phone you're going to carry every day in your hands in your pockets might as well have the one that fits best don't underestimate as i said anyway so you've got s20 plus and the s20 ultra they come with more features 
you may be using those features rarely but you may pay a much higher price for those so the differential may not justify the extra features in minds of many consumers and that's why i'm leaning more towards the galaxy s20 because for its price it's giving you pretty much the best of everything that you would want to use every day uh, and that's what you really need so anyway that's it from me guys if you've got any questions feel free to comment them in the section below and i'll obviously answer to all of those uh, as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one.